jump back to was seizures. Okay, the reason why I want to remind you is when I've been here before with many of your colleagues, the, the uh, issue of seizures came up a couple of times. And there was a couple of people who said yes, they've had experiences with, uh, with uh, some of your people, uh, some of the, the people you transport, mm -hmm. having seizures. Uh, anybody here in this room experience uh, the drivers or the aides, like, a mixture of both, right? Oh, uh, have, have experiences with uh, passengers with seizures? <laughs> a few of you, okay? What's the number one rule in terms of if they are having a seizure as far as their mouth is concerned? Can they, if they're having a seizure, swallow their tongue? No. 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 Absolutely not. If somebody stops breathing and goes unconscious, can they swallow their tongue? Absolutely not. It's attached. Okay? So you don't have to worry about sticking something in their mouth. Have you heard in the past about things to stick in their mouth? Mm. Spoons, wallets, pencils, more, worse than that, fingers, <laughs> right? So we want to stay away from putting anything in their mouth. Potential uh, seizure victims uh, have a tendency to actually put their own hands in their mouth. Have you seen that? Well, I've had some people say, yeah, they, they reach for their own mouth with their, and we don't want them to do that either but if that does happen or somebody's reaching for their mouth don't grab their hand and pull it away just a reminder if they're trying to put something else in their mouth don't grab their hand and pull it away because they can easily catch your hand and bite you right if, if you have to do something where you keep things away uh, their, own, their own body parts away from their own mouth someone reminded me and this is a good thing to remind everybody else from the elbow Grab their, grab their elbows to pull things away. You're well away from their mouth. You need to not be anywhere near their mouth if they're having a seizure. You don't want any of your body parts in their mouth to get hurt. Okay? If somebody's constantly having a seizure and their level of, conscious is, level of consciousness is dropping and it looks like they may be on the verge of collapsing, if you can, get behind them to support them and ease them down to the floor. And it's kind of hard to show you with Joey here how to ease it, but you get the idea if, if Joey had arms and legs, right? You get behind him and ease him down. Do not put your head, your chin, your nose right behind their head. They're having a seizure and they're bouncing their head around. You're going to get whacked in the nose. And that's a bad thing, right? Because to do with a bloody nose, and again, the victim isn't getting the help, and then you're bleeding in the back, right? So again, uh, getting behind them, you can think need to ease them down to the ground if they are collapsing. If a seizure victim, for any reason, is on the ground, they do collapse. Is it possible that their head could be bobbing back and forth, up and down? It is absolutely possible, like we saw in that video a little bit. And the procedure to help them in that case is to support the surrounding area um, and not let them hit their head on the floor. If they hit their head on the floor, could that be a bad thing. Yes. Yeah, that could be head, head injury, <coughs> brain damage. So, can you all see where I am here with, with Joey? Uh, if you can't see where I am, uh, we're back in front of him. Go ahead. If, if you can't see, try to maneuver yourself. As I just want to show you one thing related to handling a seizure, which is really all we can do in, in handling a seizure besides checking for breathing and pulse, and that's putting our hands underneath their head. <sighs> Perfect, perfect scenario is if you have something soft that you could put under their head, right? Well, that would be ideal. If you have that, I would still also use my hands to stabilize the head. However, when we say stabilize the head, we're not talking about <coughs> grabbing the head with our hands like this. Does everybody see what I'm doing right now? I'm not talking about doing this with their head if they're having a seizure and their head is bobbing around. What I'm suggesting is take your hands and I'm going to first show this in the air and I'll show it underneath. I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to come underneath their head and I'm simply going to interlock my fingers. <coughs> and then I'm going to bring my arms down in a square. Can you see that? How I'm doing that? That's exactly what I would do with the victim without holding on to the head while it's 
un in involved in that, that seizure uh, condition. So if I had something underneath the hands, great. And then I'm going to simply bring my hands underneath the back of the neck and the head, lock them, and then what I'm going to do, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to lay my hands as flat down on the ground as I can. Flat down on the ground as I can. What I've done is create a box. Can you see that? Yes. The box, hopefully, will prevent Joey's head and body from going anywhere where the head could get injured. See that? All I'm doing is creating an environment for safety. Got the gloves on, got my hands here, and hopefully Joey won't stop breathing. Hopefully. I'll ride it out with Joey. Hopefully the seeds will stop, and if I can, everybody is maintained, meaning they're breathing, wait for the cavalry. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If it turns out that they stop breathing, then they've probably stopped the seizure, right? Mm -hmm. No breathing, no seizure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go and check mm -hmm. the uh, breathing, airway, breathing, check the circulation. Okay, but that's how we would handle mm -hmm. a seizure victim in terms of stabilization.